Welcome, everyone, to this edition to Drunk Agile. With me, as always, the Yogi Bera of Agile. Pratik Singh. Pratik. In the back, we have our, our esteemed mascot. <laughs> every, every time. Every time she looks the same. But thanks, thanks for joining us, Nisha. Pratik, what are you drinking tonight? I am back to the stag. It's stag night once again. Uh, 64.2%. Um, good stuff. <laughs> That's all. Yeah, if you haven't, yeah. if you haven't noticed this before, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There, there's a reason that bottle's almost else. empty. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, yeah, we, we are going to need something a little bit stronger for our conversation tonight, for sure. Uh, for me, I don't want any hate mail. I don't want any rude comments, uh, but this is, a, this, already. this is a shout out again to our, our good buddy, Steve Porter. He, you know, he's proud of his Canadian whiskey. So for you, Steve, I'm still drink. I'm drinking that Crown Royal. Back to the Crown Royal Northern Rye. It's only only 45 uh, percent. Again, with all due respect to Canadian whiskey, I cannot drink this stuff straight. So I did make myself. That's the, that's the same bottle from eight months ago, right? It, uh, no comment. <laughs> but it, it's uh, it's it's it, it's not bad in an old fashioned. I mean, it's 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 passable. I've had worse. I've definitely had worse. So, cheers, everyone. Everyone. Oh, Pratik, not only is it stag night, I think it's going to be Pratik night. So oh, it's going to be all about you. I hope not, but yeah. Kick us off. What are we, what are we talking about? Yeah, so today, um, today we're going to talk about the, the more people side of Agile. Um, we, 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 we've <laughs> Perish the done. thought. Yeah. <laughs> we, we've, done a, we've done a whole bunch of stuff around metrics and how, how to manage, manage projects and, and work. But today we're going to talk a little more about the people side of Agile and how it might clash with that, the metrics and all that stuff. So in particular, we're talking about self-organization and how the team can come together and make decisions. Um, this might be a bit of a throwback to our inept and inapt series. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I mean, the, the, just to start off, so, we, I, so we're clear, because I think you and I both agree on this point. Um, the, the, the Agile manifesto is correct. You know, we do value people and their interactions. I mean, you, I mean, agile by definition is a, is a system of human beings. So if you do not address humans, the human part of it, you don't really get agile. I mean, that's, that's just, just really the point. However, <laughs> there's, there's a dark side of that, I think that rarely gets talked about, which hopefully will shed some light on tonight. Maybe. Is that, is that a fair way of, of, of kind I of think introducing so. I think, stuff? I think that's yeah. a fair, fair start to that. Um, and and of course this this um, since Dan and I don't usually talk about this stuff, obviously the the stag helps. Um, but yeah, it's 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 this whole. Let, let, let's start with the baselining concept, which is in agile, when a team is faced with a problem or when we are trying to solve something, we essentially put the problem in front of the team and go figure out what's the best way to solve this, figure out what you need to do and run with it, self-organize around this thing and run with it. That's, that's your retrospectives, that's your stand-ups. Every ceremony that you have in Agile is essentially that. The, what, what we're talking about today is how that might at times fall apart and what are the different ways it can fall apart. And, and I I, know I can see Dan waiting for me to start my rant on this. I was gonna say I'm I'm just I'm I, I was like go on. <laughs> what, uh, I know you have something you want to say about that, so just 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 run with it, go with it. Yeah. So, um, you know I'm just gonna sit here just like this. Yeah. Mm. Have you have your Canadian rye? Yeah. <laughs> so the the um, one of the one of the most um, one of the immediate impacts of, of or immediate downstream impacts of, of saying to a team, go, go organize around and go figure it out, is that the team can come up with a decision about how they're going to proceed. And those decisions might not line up with what Agile is essentially supposed to do. And, and, and uh, I'll, I'll, give, I'll give at least my definition of what Agile is supposed to do, which is deliver the highest priority things for our customers in, in, in an efficient and predictable manner. 
Right. And, and hopefully, hopefully the highest priority stuff is the highest value. Ho hopefully. That's, yes, that's hopefully. The, that's the hope, right. Yeah. yeah. Yep. If, 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 uh, if, uh, if you believe that prioritization and value line up, yep. go back and look we'll just... at the inept and napses. Exactly. Yeah. But, yep. but yeah, the, the, so whatever the highest priority is, um, we need, want to deliver that as efficiently and as, as predictably as possible. Now, this is where the team can, the, the individuals on the team can very often go, I'm a UI developer. Right now, that highest priority thing might be this back backend logic and all that stuff. What am I going to do with that? Uh, my interest and in the thing that I like to do uh, is is this this other thing where you know we have to come up with a new calendar control. So I'm going to go work on coming up with a new calendar control as opposed to you know, do that backend stuff. Well, or can I if I can pile on? Um, and I'll, I'll be the UI developer. Well, yes, okay, so I know um, product owner or product manager, I know you came to me with this list of, this prioritized list of things that you want me to do, but it all has to get done anyway. So, and I'm the one who best knows how to get all of it done. So why, why does that priority even matter? Why, you know, I'm supposed to be self-organizing. I'm supposed to be allowed to work on the things that I wanna work on uh, because that's my job, right? Yeah, and the rest of it is not my job. But the the <laughs> the the I, I will I, I would like to pick on the whole it all has to get done anyway piece, because there is a major assumption in that statement, which is it all has to get done. <laughs> that, <laughs> that, that is a huge. That first part of that is a huge assumption. How many times, and we 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 are recording this in the in the in the times of COVID. How many times have you started? You you said all, this all has to be done anyway, and something like COVID or something something else happens, market conditions change, and you have to scrap half the stuff that was on your roadmap and completely do a pivot. Or or if I can, I'll, I'll cut you off because I'm already I've already finished mine. By the way, <laughs> um, I'll cut you off if. Because I want to give my my definition of agile, which goes along with this. My definition definition of agile is the ability to make progress with imperfect information, but then the ability to change quickly, once or you know shift quickly once better information comes along, which I think completely makes your point. Is you know yeah. if we have this list of twenty things that we think we need to get done, well after we get the first or second things done, we may have learned something extremely useful that makes the last eighteen completely useless, right? So why would we work, why would we work on those? And hey, uh, UI developer, if you're working on priority number 18, guess what? That's in that bucket of stuff that we don't need anymore, you know? So I, I think that's really, that's isn't, isn't that, yeah. that where you're going with this? Yeah. Yeah, and um, again, if you go back to our Monte Carlo series when we talked about feature Monte Carlo and that fun stuff, by working on priority number 18, by increasing your feature whip, you're putting everything else at risk. You're increasing the number of features we're working on, which is further, uh, what's what's the multiple of bifurcating? <laughs> I don't know, I'll go to the Google while you keep talking. Yeah, yeah which is further spreading out our throughput <laughs> and, um, and putting our higher priority efforts at risk. So you working on priority number 18 is putting priority one through three or four, whatever other people are working on at risk because you're not contributing to those. Did you find the multiple of bifurcating? Uh, you're on mute, but anyway. I'm working on it, keep talking. <laughs> so then, right now what are you doing right here? Um, bifurcations. Um, uh, okay, okay, there are multiple there. bifurcations of your throughput. There you go, there you go, yeah. yeah. So that's, that's um, that, so not only are you potentially working on things that might get canceled, you're also hurting the team's ability to finish the highest priority things, which again, for me is, is, is doing a major disservice to your team uh, and, and putting essentially putting yourself ahead of the team, um, which I don't think we've done the, I don't think we've done the super chicken stock before, but the the one about the baseball and basketball teams and how 
if, if everyone goes, if, if on a, if on a basketball team, everyone wants to shoot and, and get, and, and get the points, you're essentially going to fall apart. You need people who rack up the assists. You need people who go play defense. You, you need folks to do, do all those things. You can't just have everyone just going up and up the court and shooting. So, yeah, that's, that's, um, I guess that's, that's one example of where self-organizing or an individual putting themselves ahead of, ahead of the team or the team making the decision that we are going to make sure that all of our individuals focus only on their specialties uh, can hurt the team long-term, even though it might make sense to them short-term. I mean, yeah, this is, this is, this is, as you said, this is classic inept and inept stuff. Um, I'm sure the, um, the scrum listeners out there are, are, sh are shouting um, that, uh, that they've know, known about this kind of stuff for years. Uh, you know, any process geek has known about this stuff for years. Uh, that self-organization doesn't mean anarchy. Self-organization self doesn't mean, you know, do, do whatever you want, when, whenever you want. Self-organization requires some type of constraint um, that allows the team to, to self-organize. Self um, and then the, the other kind of the other part of the self-organization then is the inspect and adapt to you. If you're given... This is, I think, what, what I was saying before before the call. If you're given the responsibility to do something, that responsibility doesn't come for free. That is, that responsibility comes with accountability. So, if, if you're given response, the responsibility of self organizing, the account accountability part of that is to to make sure that that you know you're at least trying to improve, which is what the inspect and adapt piece of, of Scrum is all about. But as we've talked about, what this whole series is about <laughs> is that humans are terrible at inspecting and adapting. And they're, they're going to take a look at like, I'm working on this priority number 18 thing. And that's great because it's something that I want to do. It's something that I have a skill set for. It's something that I'm passionate about. And so therefore, I should be working on priority 18, regardless of all the stuff that you just said, Pratik, how it's potentially killing our team's ability to get anything done. Yeah, and, and I, I often look at this as, as, as um, from the perspective of managing an Agile team. And, and we, we've, we've talked before, I don't know if we, that will get published before this or this will get published after that. But we have in one of the videos, either priorly, priorly published or about to be published, uh, talked about actively managing work. And when you're managing an agile team, you're really what you're really doing is actively managing work. Um, and, and there's a whole range of, of there's a whole spectrum of where that management falls. You you won't just have someone come in and say, "Hey, I don't want to work." You won't put up with that. Hopefully, you won't put up with. I'm going to work on whatever I care about, whether it benefits the organization or not. You won't put up with, I want to work, whatever care about, whether it benefits the team or not. And, and hopefully, as we're talking through this, you won't put up with, I'm going to work on whatever is on the team's list, regardless of whether it's a high priority or not. Um, so th th I think they're all manifestations of the same thing, just at different levels. So, and, and uh, at least in my opinion, and I think in our opinion, a well-managed work stream is where the highest priority thing gets picked up, regardless of the uh, the abilities. Well, not necessarily just the abilities, but the interest of the people who are working on it. This is the highest priority of the team. We'll we'll coalesce around it and figure out how to get it done. No, no arguments from Dan. <laughs> yes, I was on mute again. Yes. <laughs> No, no arguments. Dan's as quiet as Nisha right now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, yeah, I guess if, if you're looking for an argument, we should have chosen something else. Like, you know, yeah. um, you know, is Nadal the best tennis player of all time? I mean, the answer to that is yes, of course. We know, we know, we, we know that's that's true. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, I, so I mean, I don't know. Kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of bring it together for us. So what, what, what are, what are we really saying? Because I, I feel like we've kind of talked at this higher level. I mean, what? Whoa. I think what we're what we're really saying is, and, and, and I'll, I'll tie it together with all the things we've talked about in the past. Do you have multiple tools at your at your disposal to figure out what is the risk to your highest priority items? Uh, aging is a great way to look at it. 
uh, Monte Carlo is another great way of looking at it. And when those tools tell you, or in order to, to or in order to avoid those tools telling you that there some your highest priority things are at risk, the way we go about it is to make sure the team's efforts are concentrated on the highest priority items for the team, uh, and not on other things which can, as a side effect, put the higher priority items at risk. Because at its essence, at its essence, doing agile means embracing that uncertainty. We know things will change. We know they will change. It's not a question of if they will change. It's a question of when they will change. And when they change, we don't want to. I was going to say we don't want to get caught with our pants down. I don't know if we can say that or not. <laughs> but you know, we 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 don't want to get caught with our hand in the cookie jar, whatever. What you know, whatever the metaphor that you you want here, uh, because we need to be able to respond to that change. We have to. That's that's like I said. That's the whole point of agile is, you can't you can't plan for complexity, or you can't plan in a complex domain, a complex environment. So quit trying to right, and and instead take these mitigation techniques that that you you've been talking about this whole time. That's a much better approach. Is um, trying trying to understand and manage risk rather than trying to drive out drive out the complex drive out complexity and drive out uncertainty by by planning. Yeah, ma managing risk for the team um, and, and managing the work of the team is a lot more, at least in my opinion, important than actively managing the people on the team because that's, for me, that's where self-organization comes in. The people can manage themselves as long as you've managed the work to say this is the, and the risk to say this is the most important thing. Now people, since this is our true north, this is the most important thing, you self-organize to figure out how we get this thing done. Yeah, because I, you know, because I, I think this 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 warrant saying, um, and I, I know there's a there's a member on our our team that we used to work with who shall remain nameless who won't necessarily agree with what I'm about to say, uh, but I believe fundamentally, more more often than not, people are professionals, right? I mean, they I don't really don't think anybody shows up at work and says I'm going to do the absolute worst that I can today. I don't think anybody says that. On the flip side, I, I don't know that many people show up and say, I'm going to do the absolute best I can today. I think some people do, you know? Um, and I think what you're talking about is uh, there's, there's all this noise in the system. There's, you know, there's the how we're managing the work and there's, you know, you know all this stuff that prevents people from, from getting to that point where they can be the best that they can be. Thank you, Army. Um, you know, and, and so it's by... You know, uh, management is, um, I, you know, I always say this, I always felt like uh, ma management is a two-sided optimization. You know, most people think management is about how do you motivate your people and how do you get them to do your best, their best. I always thought that management was about how do you get rid of the stuff that demotivates them? That's, that, that's really where, where, where you should be spending your time as, mm -hmm. uh, as a manager, because if you get rid of that demotivation stuff, for the most part, I think, you know, pe people will be, be professional and, and motivate themselves. Yeah. For the most part, uh, for the most part. Yeah, uh, and that's, that's I mean, you, you were just talking about, you just reminded me as you were talking about that of a of, of, of football team, the, 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 the coach draws up the plays or sets that up and then goes, go execute. The coach is not there on the field, tapping at everyone's shoulder going, hey, go that way. No, they, they, they set up the plays, they set up the thing and go, okay, now that we have these parameters set up, now that we understand the basic philosophy of how we play, go play. Um, I assume you're talking about American football. I, although I suppose that analogy works, still works for-, works. for, I, for I was actually very careful football. not yeah. to- Yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> I was yeah. careful not to mention any of, any yeah. particular sport because it works for all of them. Yeah. Um, but again, if you don't, taking that analogy, I think to its logical yeah. conclusion, if you don't do, your job and you, mm -hmm. you know, you miss an assignment or you, you're not acting as a team player, yeah. there's going to be a consequence in, you know, in, you know, in that world, you know? Yeah. And that's and, when, when you're highly competitive, high in that highly professional competitive environment, those, once you understand the play, the execution is up to you. But if you miss on that execution, or if you don't fail to understand the play worse, if you fail to understand the play, that's that's when everything goes wrong. That's when person A is expecting you to be at spot X and you're not there. That that's when everything goes wrong.
I don't know. What else do we have? Anything? Do we have anything else? Have you finished? Have you finished your set? Do we have? Any... No. <laughs> <laughs> I've been talking too much. Yeah. No. It's, it's 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 been fun for me. Although, like I said, I, I've run out of a drink. Um. So I, I yeah. So I, I guess to, to to recap, we're you know, like I said at the outset, no one is denying the importance of people in agile. In fact, nobody's denying the paramount importance of of people in agile. But I think what 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 gets ignored too much is you know focusing on making sure the the people feel good about themselves and how they're working, rather than like what you're saying is, you know, hey, what what's you know what's what's best for our customer? What's best for the team? What's best for the you know whatever the context is that we're in? Um, because that good. I was saying the the customer and the team come before. Yourself, um, yourself, your individual, and 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 anyone who has played any organized sports will tell you that the your your step one is to make sure the team succeeds. Right, and that's not to say if you know if you're suffering or struggling or whatever that you won't be given the support because again that's that's the other side of teamwork is mm-hmm. whenever somebody on the team is struggling, the the team rallies around that person and and helps them out. I mean that's we're talking I think about basic professionalism here. That's yeah. You know, that's it. We're talking about professionalism, not not individualism, not not anarchy, not mm-hmm. whatever. So, um, this was your topic. So, as always, I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you the last point, the last word on this. Just yeah, the the the, the it's it's the no I and team thing. It's it's let's let's put the team's goals and the team's um, priorities ahead of your own and. How do we as the, the the always the trick in knowledge work is. How do we come together and accomplish those 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 high level goals, rather than how do I get the best out of it for me? Yeah, I mean, not to totally undermine everything we've just said, but you know, whenever somebody says there's no I in team, I always think of you know what Michael Jordan said, uh, you know, which <laughs> it's tough to argue. It's tough to argue against. Tough to argue. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, for Nisha, who was showing some signs of life there for a while. Uh, her eyes are open right now. Yeah, for, she was just washing herself, I think. <laughs> yeah. So uh, for Nisha in the background there, for the Yogi Berra of Agile. Wait, you ha- we haven't had a Yogi Berraism. We have haven't. We? Um, in in order to in order to really work like a team, we have to come together as a team. There you have it. My name is Daniel Vacanti. Thank you for joining us for this edition of Drunk Agile. We'll see you in the next episode. Good night, everybody.